started. So hi, I'm Bill Serretta. I'm the VP of Hardware Engineering here at Pure Storage. And today we're going to go through uh, Flash Array M. We're going to take out some components, look at some of the hardware. So um, Flash Array M is really uh, a new step for us. If you think about it, it wasn't that long ago that Pure Storage was thought of as a software-only company. And within the last two years, we've developed this hardware design capability, and now we're bringing new hardware to market, and Flash Array M is the first instantiation of that. Flash Array M went GA in August and uh, um, has been a very successful product and a success successful launch for us. So, but what I want to talk about today is that Flash Array M has great performance and density and it's easy to use, but I want to talk about how it ties in the Evergreen story and how upgrading it is easy and, and it really uh, works well with our idea that over time components change, capabilities get added, software gets upgraded, but you're always able to work with the same system and the same system evolves over time seamlessly. All right. So I wanted to step through some of the components of the, of the design today. So on the left you see a picture of the front, and on the right you see a picture of the back. So um, the chassis itself is modular, has components that plug in through the, the front and the back. Um, the front components are the flash modules and the NVRAM, and in the rear of the box are the controllers and the power supplies. So I'm gonna, I have a flash array M here, I'm gonna take some, some of it apart and show you the different components. So uh, here's the bezel that we're really proud of. Um, the uh, NVRAM are these four modules across the front. These four modules, each eight gigabyte, they ask, act as our write cache. They're PCI connected to the controllers, PCI uh, Gen 3 by 4 uh, dual ported back to the two controllers. And so servicing them is super simple. Just pull it out the front. They're hot pluggable. They have a, a, a super cap uh, a backup system where the data is never lost. So this is a, a NVRAM module with the cover off. It's uh, again, it's PCI connected with a non-volatile dim inside with a super cap backup. So it's a very, very fr uh, flat, uh, fast write cache l with less than 100 microseconds latency in both directions. So I'll just pass this around. You can check it out. Also in the front are our um, data storage or flash modules. Each flash module has two SSDs in, within it, dual connected SAS 12 gig through the mid-plane. Um, it's uh, hot pluggable, serviceable. Of course, you can, as always with pure storage, two modules can go down at nice. once. So <laughs> pass that around if you want to check it out. Again, all this hardware was developed internally. If you want to upgrade or change the controller, then you just pull out an in the individual controller. The controller is independently serviceable. Each one of the uh, controllers has the same horsepower as a, as a 2RU server, as the latest Intel Haswell EP chipset. Uh, multiple PCI adapters pluggable through the back so we can have different types of I.O. Um, of 16 gig fiber channel, 40 gig Ethernet, 10 gigabit Ethernet. All of these are optional in the back. It's, a, it's an indi individual unit. Could, if it fails, it can be serviced independently. Um, and of course, as any uh, sort of modern data center equipment, we have independent dual hot pluggable power supplies. So these modules, um, this is sort of an industry standard power supply and we can upgrade it over time. So if you look at all these different modules together, we can upgrade the, uh, the capacity and bandwidth of the write cache the, or the NVRAM, the capacity and bandwidth of the flash modules or storage modules. We can develop new uh, pro controllers over time and we have a roadmap into the future where um, new uh, capabilities can be brought into the chassis. The chassis itself has a mid-plane that is somewhere between eight and ten times the bandwidth of what we use in the current product. Already broken. So there's a lot of headroom in the current chassis. The, uh, everything about the chassis, all of the, the performance metrics can be, can be raised over time. So we feel like <clears throat> with a, with a, we made a big investment in this product. The product is expandable through the uh, existing shelves. So, if 3RU, if you can't, if you need more than 40 uh, terabytes raw within 3RU, you can add expansion um, capabilities onto are, that are same chassis. Are the NVRAMs chassis. accessible from either controller or just dedicated yeah. to one yeah. controller so, at a time? Yeah. So, 
So NVRAM module plugs in in the front here, there's four of them. It's PCI Gen 3 dual home to each controller. So it's dual connected back to the controllers. So think about it. A lot of NVRAM or write caches today are contained within the controller. And then when a write goes to that, ca that NVRAM or write cache within the controller, it has to be synced to the other controller. And there's a big communication back and forth to keep the two controllers in sync. Here, we're going to a remote location that's dual uh, connected. You write to that location. It's instantly accessible from the other controller. Here's Steven. So, uh, no, sorry, like this power supply module is having some uh, battery module in, in internal or? I'm sorry? The power supply is having some battery module in, in internal insert? The, or, the uh, power supply does not have a battery. There's no large battery in here. It is very much heavy. The only data that's at risk <laughs> is what goes to the NVRAM, which has a non-volatile DIMM and is saved instantly here. Okay. So there's no data at risk. There's no data at risk on the controller. Our, our architecture is a stateless controller architecture. Everything within, that's every uh, packet that's held within the controller can be lost, right? It's effectively cached. It's saved elsewhere in the system and, and the uh, data integrity is assured. So, yeah. okay. no, so power so now, the writes go to a single NVRAM um, DIM or do they get split? No, no, they're, they're, uh, they're spread across. Look at those cams. Uh, mirrored across so that if a single NVRAM goes down, there's no loss. And there's no loss in performance. Our performance is measured against uh, one NVRAM working. So if, one of, if you have two NVRAM, one of them's lost. There's no reduction in uh, performance for the array. When are you going to be releasing shells with the mini 12 gig? With 12 gig within them? Yeah. I'm not sure I can give exact timing, but it's pretty darn soon. <laughs> Um, today, we are shipping uh, drives that are um, uh, planar NAND, and as you can see, by using industry standard SSDs, there is a path to using uh, 3D NAND in the same product as well. So there was a question about evergreen storage before, about how would we migrate and move uh, through products. Well, we've proven through the past four years that we've been able to do this. From our very first product all the way to Flash or AM, you've been able to move non-disruptively from chassis to chassis, keeping your same storage active and, and data online for your customers. And this has included chassis movements over time, but now we're in a chassis where within the chassis we can change components and, and continue on this, on this journey. It was really one of the key parts of the design that we thought about right from the beginning. And that's done through online data migration between the units and multipathing. And yeah, so we don't like the term <laughs> migration, right? Because yeah, yeah. migration means you set up a box over here, you set up a box over here, you set a bunch of cables, and maybe you had to do it at 3 o'clock in the morning, and maybe things didn't work. We don't really think of it as migration. When you change a head end and, and the data's in the expansion shell, there's no migration. It's yeah. all running while you're doing it. But the 450 to the Flash Array M is a, is a physical migration of data. You're not actually no. taking the SSDs. You know what it is? I, I, it's surprising, but it actually it's not. Because if you think about the F FA450, these two controllers, right, they would be removed. The Flash Array M would come into that spot all live. Flash Array M can attach to the same shelves. It's all live. It's all running. There's no data migration going on. You're just offlining so, but, one but, controller but, but at a time. To take that chassis and disconnect the old controllers and reconnect the new controllers is a disruption. No. It isn't, actually. So here, it's, it's pretty innovative. But what we do is we take one of the controllers offline, the other one's still serving data. Remember, one of the tenets of our architecture is that if a redundant copy goes down, you maintain the same performance. So we maintain the same performance. Flash Array M connects to the old controller. Con connects to the shelves, everything's still live, everything's still serving data, and then once we're ready, you move your, your flow over to Flash Array M, you hook up the second contro controller, which is connected internally, the two controllers talk to each other internally, and you disconnect the old controller, and you've done it. There was no, there was no data migration during the process. At that point, the SSDs and in, uh, that are on the Flash Array M aren't populated with data, they're just 
they're just Correct. their excess storage effectively Correct. that can be used for other data. You know, our performance continues to scale along with Intel as new processors are brought online. And if our controller today is about is the same horsepower as a 2RU server. It's a full-blown server. So as you add, as new processors come out, we're able to develop new controllers that'll seamlessly work here. You had a question? Yeah, probably a stupid question, but it's about the fact that uh, in the previous version you had the NVRAM in the in the trays, and now it's uh, in a, so the migration process process need to take care of that right. migration. Right. So in our previous version, you're right. The NVRAM were actually high-performance SSDs plugged into the sh expansion shelves themselves. When we first connect to the flash array M in the NDU process, we're still using that old NVRAM. During, and then once the, the uh, NDU works to the new product, then the right cache becomes the internal NVRAM and performance goes up. Okay. We also give you an SSD to fill the old slots. So you can pull out your old NVRAM and get more capacity. All right, any other questions? Anything else that... So, again, another innovative thing about the Flash Array M launch is that it uses the same code path. So when the product came out, it wasn't a whole new Purity. It was a, a newer version of Purity, but it's the same OS that we use today. Which, if you think about it, that was a necessary step in order to continue the evergreen story from the, from the previous storage. So today, you can go all the way back to the base of our, our lineage, all the way back to the 300, and NDU to the latest product that just GA'd in August of 2015. Same purity. Do you have to go back to intermediate steps? No, you do not need to go to back to intermediate steps. You can NDU from the FA320 to the Flash Array M right now. Even if it's different code bases on either one of them? Right, so we will move the 320 forward with a uh, non-disruptive upgrade of, of OS on that product oh, nice. okay. and then, in, then initiate the NDU. In the future, the, the, um, not only will the SSDs move forward and the controllers move forward, but we also have headroom and bandwidth to move the non-volatile RAM forward in, in capacity and speed as well. Now, one of the key innovations here in this is that we speak NVMe, the controller talks NVMe to the NVRAM today. NVMe is a really new technology and a buzzword and a hot item in the storage today. We already have that working today with our NVRAM and our mid-plane is NVMe enabled. So all of our con connections to our drives, our data drives, all use the brand new uh, SFF8639 connector where that there's an NVMe. That to U.2 last month. What's that? That connector got renamed to U.2. Sorry, U.2. Okay, I didn't know that. Um, so it's brand new uh, technology. Those connect every slot in our box is, is, has that connector and is uh, dual homed back to the controller with NVMe PCIe or SAS 12 gig. So that gives us a migration story in the future where we can take on these new technologies as they become mature in the marketplace.